I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels for ESA Web TV, and I'm standing in front of the Aeolus satellite. Now, this satellite carries a laser that is going to measure winds. This information is useful not only for weather forecasting, but also to help us better understand atmospheric dynamics and climate. This technology is one of a kind, but with a unique mission come unique challenges. We spoke with the mission manager, Anders Elfing, to tell us more. This satellite has been a long time coming. How long has it taken to build Aeolus? Well, it started actually with the real development in 2002. So it's really 16 years and it originally had a plan for eight years or even six year development. So it's been really a tough uh, road to come to these things, but we are so happy to be here. Now, as a project manager, you are responsible for the building of the satellite. Have you been around for 16 years? No, I am not. I was taking this eight years ago, so halfway, and I had actually two predecessors uh, who started and, and carried the initial part of the project. But since then I have uh, taken it. But um, it's been a sufficient amount of challenges on the way there also. What were the challenges? Why has it taken so long? Well, it's the first time we do this kind of instrument ever. In fact, in ultraviolet ever in the world. So it is really breakthrough technologies, learning how to master these technologies. There is no reference. We cannot fall back on another mission. So we had to find out all the, the, the troubles and solutions by ourselves first time. And especially since this is our we, we are our own sun. We, we create the light that we are later on observing uh, compared to using our nice sun to, to see the light. We created the light and, and that is really the core of our, our challenges and also the technology breakthrough. Okay, so when you're talking about the light, you're talking about a laser. Exactly. Okay, so there's and a laser inside behind this uh, behind this covering yes, here. Yes, what we vaguely see behind the cover is the main mirror and telescope, which actually takes the laser pulse and sends it into the atmosphere. And three milliseconds later, typically, it returns very, very small amount, uh, a, a very fraction of the light, but still enough to compare that light with what we send out. And that's really the core of the instrument, to compare the frequency, what goes out, the wavelengths, what goes out and what comes back. And that tells us what is the speed of the things which reflected back. And when you mentioned troubles, can you give us a little insight on what happened? Yeah, I mean, there are so enormous energies in this laser when it hits the optical elements. Uh, we are heating, uh, we are pulsing the laser 50 times a second. Uh, and every time it hit, the pulse hits an optical element, it goes from ambient temperature, 20 degrees, to 1700 degrees. And it does that 50 times a second for three, four, five years. You can imagine the coating, how stressed they are and how they give up at the end. But we have had so many trials and uh, new and better and improved coatings to capture this uh, problem. And now we are so happy to have the latest state-of-the-art coatings which can handle this UV light with this high fluence. And of course I understand it has to be extremely clean as well. Exactly. Why? So we have the two main challenges for all the time here. We had the laser induced damage which I just talked about, the coating damaging, but we also laser induced contamination where every little organic material, if it's hit in vacuum by the laser light, it carbonizes and darkens the optics. So our first trial in vacuum, we only operated the laser for about six minutes and it lost 50% of its power. So uh, throughout the years we've learned and we have understood and we have implemented technical solutions to overcome that. And here we have a laser which for sure will go for three years. And we know it uh, by the sample testing and the testing, live testing we've done. So it's come a, a long way. Now, of course, you can control the environment and control the cleanliness here on Earth. How about in space? Yeah, you would think that vacuum is very clean. And it is if it is pure vacuum. But you can never launch a satellite completely clean. It will outgas. It has some organics or other things coming out of the material 
that's we build it. And that uh, causes, if we did nothing in vacuum, to do this carbonization. So we actually flush it, so-called, with oxygen continuously for the whole lifetime. Very small amount, but that burns away whatever contaminants are there and therefore enables us not to carbonize, but to really have clean optics for that long lifetime. So we have an oxygen tank, on the, I understand, on the underside of the satellite, and it's going to be sort of pushing out a little bit of uh, yes, oxygen during the exactly. entire three years or more, hopefully. Yes, and of course um, we cannot carry a huge tank, so they are two small tanks with high pressure, so it's liquid oxygen, but then uh, we spill out slightly small, small, small amount. Um, uh, the amount of what the normal plant in your office creates uh, in oxygen, but enough to combust and, and help this uh, burn away of the, of the, of the contaminant. So after eight years with the satellite, of course, soon it will be sent off to Kourou, launched into space. Yeah. How does it feel to, or how do you think it'll feel to say goodbye? Well, uh, sad because it's also a team that we say a little bit goodbye to. We, we worked eight years or more together, forming a team and having really trust in each other because that is what makes you believe that you can do it, that individuals have the expertise and so. So that's, of course, always sentimental, and, and uh, but technically, of course, a fantastic opportunity to show actually the world that Europe can do this, European Space Agency can be so unique uh, because other space agencies have not even tried and those who have tried has failed. So we have the eyes from, of the world on us, uh, which is a strong responsibility, but uh, we are really uh, challenged uh, this and, and we, we are very confident that this will be a great opportunity. Well, Anders, best of luck for the launch and thank you so much for joining us today. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space, about our planet, or about the Aeolus satellite, you can visit our website at www.esa.int.